Now, in recent international news is the rise in the number of arranged weddings brokered online in India. The surge has given rise to the country's first web-based premarital detective search service who will supply private detectives to snoop on prospective in-laws. In a country where 95% of marriages are arranged by parents, such tools have proven hugely popular. But in our own lives, you know, when you're searching for a partner, how, how much did you look to your parents for advice? And did you actually listen to them? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have. Um, no. I think my parents were great because they were always... They must have walked away sometimes and thought, oh, please... Please not that one. Please not that one. Please don't let that be the one. But they never... They, if you were happy, they were happy. I do remember my dad one day saying, I can't believe I've got six daughters and not one of you's met a millionaire. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think ultimately your parents want you to be with someone who... Can you're going to you. can look yeah, after you yeah. and you're not going to have any worries yeah, for the course. rest of your life. But none of us did. I mean, we met a lot of millionaires, but we weren't those type, you know, we always, it was for love. It was never for money with mm -hmm. any. We were all yeah. a bit like that. So. I, don't think, I don't think money is that important. You know, you want to kind of have someone you're comfortable with. But I remember when I used to work on cruise ships and I met this um, short, fat, um, not so good looking bloke. <laughs> And my mother thought he was marvellous because he had a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, you know, that's the basis for a good future, isn't it? Yeah. A helicopter. But I, I, I kind of think, I think there's something in it, really, your parents choose them for you. I'm going to listen now. Really? The, yeah, definitely. Does your mum still give you advice? Does oh, she point absolutely. point someone out in the room and go, right, him, him, give him a go? Not so much. She'll just say to me, oh, Claire, you know, not... That one's unsuitable. Don't go there again, you know. Mm -hmm. And she will, you know, she gives me really sound advice. But you can only learn, Claire, by your mistakes. You can't learn by your mother's. Hey, listen, you have no regrets in anything, in anything I've done or any partners. I just think, uh, you know, your mother knows best. What about the, the, the notion of hiring, you know, a private detective to look into, you know, the prospective in-laws or, or what have you? Do you think that's taking it a step too far or would you... I would think you Ray wish he'd done that. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I think he, he did. <laughs> I think now I think he'd run a mile. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what do you think? I think, I think it's pretty good, you know. I, I, I mean, all my girls say to me now, Claire, we're getting a committee for your next fella. Yeah. They're all going to judge him. And me, you know, all my boyfriends as well are going to choose as well. Okay. Male friends, that is. Yes. <laughs> the thing is, though, when you're young, you don't listen to your mother, do you? No. You don't listen to anything she says. It doesn't matter what they say. You know, my mother said to me so many times, he's wrong, he's wrong. And you know what? I went exactly the other way that's because good. that's what you yeah. do. It's forbidden fruit, isn't yes, it? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But you know what? She was right. Mm. And I can say that now in hindsight, of course I can. And, yeah. and, but you, you can't be guided by somebody in, in those cases. You can't, you've got to learn yourself. You've got to make all those mistakes yourself. You've got to come a cropper. You've got to pick yourself up. Mm. Then go back and say, Mum, you're right. I will listen to you now. I agree with you now as a 40-year-old woman, but as a, as a sort of teenager in my, or in my early 20s or what have you, I was brought up to listen to my mum and dad. So actually it didn't occur to me to not listen to them because I always felt that they had my best interests at heart, that they wouldn't necessarily have said, oh, no, not him, if they weren't right. So uh, I did the opposite. If my parents said, oh, no, I don't like the him of look of him very much I went that way and you know I, I married my first mate, real boyfriend that I had at school and you know he's from a, a he's a lovely guy came from a, a good family and a good home and you know he ticked loads and loads of boxes mm. okay it didn't actually work out but I don't know what else they could have necessarily done to find Sometimes someone Andrea, all the boxes can be ticked yeah. someone can be seen perfect on paper but the magic doesn't happen no. and when that magic happens sometimes you can't fight it well I, I, I have to say as well I've never understood women who you know just marry for money or just because he's loaded you know what I mean but I oh, have no. to say I've never understood that until last weekend <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> because right I was working and, and the guy I was working in with was like a multi-millionaire and afterwards um, it was in London I had to get back to, from, to Manchester and he said no no you must come in the helicopter with me <laughs> it wasn't her friend from private cruise, helicopter no no it wasn't and um, and we went in this private helicopter and we landed in his front garden. Well, I say front garden, it was a park. And um, the most beautiful mansion in front of me. And then he had the Bentley waiting to drive me home. And I thought, oh, I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> I just really I'm get it. Attractive. Yeah, he suddenly became really, really attractive. Was he married? <laughs> Yes, oh. yes, he was. <laughs> happily, happily, oh. ever after. But they all are. Okay. Uh, time for a